I'm very pleased and honored to take the floor in this important symposium on behalf of the community of San Egidio. Let me thank Religion for Peace Japan and the Japan Religious Committee for World Federation for having organized this relevant event together with us. I would also like to express my thanks to the city of Hiroshima, to the Association of Religions of the Hiroshima Prefecture, and to the Embassy of Italy in Japan for their kind support. Today, on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, and 70 years after the tragedy of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima, we say together, war never again. We said, in 1989 too, 50 years after the outbreak of this tragic conflict in Warsaw, the first European city invaded by Nazi troops. War never again, we said. Then, in 1989, these were the words also of the venerable Yamada Itai, as the leader of significant Tendai Shu delegation from Japan. He was present at that historic event in Poland on September 1st in the very heart of Warsaw. Venerable Yamada told us that in 1944, he was in Okinawa. And with a weapon of prayer, he struggled against the violence of war. He continued. Then I realized that the time had come for all believers to unite in order to solve the dramatic problems of humanity. A few days later, receiving the Japanese delegation in Castel Gandolfo, the Saint Paul John Paul II told them, you have all been in Poland, my homeland, where you have commemorated with the community of San Egidio the 15th anniversary of the outbreak of World War II that culminated with the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And he had it. War is destruction of human life. War is that. War is man-made. So, as the war is conceived in the human heart, peace must also be generated from our hearts. Yesterday in Warsaw, today in Hiroshima, the same appeal, war never again. It is a cry that rises from the very heart of humanity and from the deepest heart of the earth itself, tired of violence and war. War never again. This is a commitment to build peace in a world still so violent as the one we live in. Today, the world is globalized but it's, it is also so fragmented. It is a fragmentation that runs through cultures and religions themselves. We live in a world of chaos and conflicts. During the flight back from his trip to Korea, Pope Francis said, today we can speak of a third war fought in pieces with crimes, massacres, destruction. We need a new commitment to build peace. This commitment must be the result of a broad collaboration between religions, cultures, politics, and the economy. No longer living in separate spheres, but working together through a constructive and open dialogue. Science and religion, wrote Pope Francis in his last, last encyclical, praise be to you, Science and religion provide different approaches to reality, but they, they can enter a sustained and productive dialogue. Today we remember the tragedy of Hiroshima on August 6, 1945. It is necessary. To build a future of peace, we cannot forget the pain of the past. There is no future without memory, we say at San Egidio, but memory, of the past must never become a reason for revenge, but a lesson and a warning to build a future of peace. Erasing memory of the past makes it easier to repeat the mistakes of the past with the same violence and the same cruelty. It is the case, let me say, 
of the Holocaust of the Armenians this year is its 100th anniversary. A tragedy long forgotten. Several historical sources say that Adolf Hitler, in conceiving the extermination of the Jews, was inspired by the plight of the Armenians. He said in a famous speech on August 22nd, 1939, that invading Poland, it was necessary to massacre men, women, and children without worrying about any future consequences. Since, he stated, who today remembers the massacres of the Armenians? To forget is very dangerous. Today, unfortunately, the idea that it is necessary to erase the past in order to build something authentically new is again widespread, especially among the younger generations in the West, as in the his dangerous and far-right nationalist movement tribe, ignoring the lesson of history and repeating forms of violence and racism against all minorities. They exclude and marginalize the weak, the immigrants, the sick, the elderly, in short, all those considered different, different. It's dramatic to say, but this is not accidental this happens in the name of the same alleged purification of the world contained in the foolish prayer said by the pilot before dropping the bomb on Hiroshima on August 6, 45, at 8.15 a.m., the same. We can say today, and we can say it together, and being together is our nonviolent strength, War never again. Today it means I do not agree to exclude the weak and poor. I do not agree to marginalize the elderly as if they were expected only to die. I do not agree to close the borders in front of the refugees and people seeking a future. I do not agree with an absolute judgment as in the capital punishment, which more than once has condemned to death Many innocent people, too. I do not agree with treating the weakest like waste. In praise be with you, be to you, Pope Francis writes, the economic powers continue to justify the current war system in which prevail speculation and the search for financial returns that ignore the effects of human dignity and on the natural environment. And he continues, a scenario in emerging in favor of new worlds, albeit under the guise of noble claims. War always does grave harm to the environment and to the cultural riches of people, risks which are magnified where one considers nuclear arms and biological weapons. No, then, to rearmament. In Japan and in every country, no to the culture of the enemy, no to war and violence, no to the marginalization, the exclusion of those who are different, no to changing the interpretation of Article 9 on the Japanese Constitution, no to financing or more researches on the nuclear arms and biological weapons, no to the unwise and irresponsible use of nuclear power, the dreadful memories of Chernobyl in Ukraine and Fukushima in Japan are a teaching for us. War never again. The world must change. The world can change. Think of the new diplomatic relation between the United States and Cuba or the recent nuclear agreement with Iran. They seemed impossible only a short time ago. But history is full of surprises. We say today, with much more hope, war never again. We want to raise a message of peace, loud and clear, from Hiroshima today, dear friends. May this message reach the whole world. This message, this message rises from the heart of religions. Religions do not want to erase memory. 
for religious memory and tradition are a great treasure which must be spent to spread the good in society today. In 1986, St. Paul, John Paul II said in Assisi, peace is a worship open to all. Religions call for the cooperation of all, scientists, politicians, and economists to build a world of peace together. This is the secret. Together, everything is possible. Peace is always possible if we work together if we hope and we dream together of a common future. Because the world, our poor earth, Pope Francis says, is and must increasingly become our shared home. Thank you very much.